Um, I want to ask you, Madam Speaker, about what we've seen play out in the last couple of days for your successor with Speaker Kevin McCarthy, where he has now said, yes, we're going to have an impeachment inquiry. We're not going to have a vote on it. We're just going to go forward with this. And to the extraordinary sight of backbenchers, members of the Freedom Caucus, scolding the Speaker of the House, saying you are out of compliance, Speaker McCarthy. You will do as we say. We put you in this job on the 15th vote back in January, and here are our list of demands. Otherwise, we will vacate the chair. As someone who not so long ago held that chair as speaker yeah. and did so very well for a long time, what do you make as you watch that play out? Well, I think it's a continuation of the uh, uh, the night he was uh, confirmed, he was voted as speaker. He kept making concessions and concessions. I call it the incredibly shrink shrinking speakership. Uh, the at some point you have to say, why do I want to be speaker? What do I want to accomplish? Is it just to be speaker for the accoutrement of power and this or that, the, the cards, the this, the that, or is it about to get the job done for the American people? And if your members have the confidence that you are the person to do the job, then at some point there's a decision that has to be made. The decision was made in favor of, of uh, the fringe, and that's what we're living with now. Uh, but you, really, you, uh, when, for example, when I was running for speaker with, uh, in 18, with 19, right then, people were, I was for um, pay as you go. And many in my caucus said, well, we don't want pay as you go. You've got to say you can't do pay as you go. That means you, if you want to spend more money, you have to offset it or you have to have revenue to pay for it. And that was not popular with many members of my caucus. And they were, until you say you're not doing that, we're not voting for you. I said, well, I don't want to be speaker if I cannot be true to what I believe in terms of fiscal responsibility, as well as offering waivers for climate change and exceptional things. So you have to just, you're either the person they want or you're not. And clearly, he was desperate enough for this speakership to just grant them a, a veto power over everything that he wants to do. But let's hope for the best. You know, let's hope for that's both the experience and and moving forward and the rest that the rest of the caucus of the Republican caucus will say, no, we want to get a job done here rather than just go as slow as the slowest ship in a convoy rather than a bandwagon uh, of, a, of a party to go forward with an agenda. And again, working as far, much as possible in a bipartisan way because we have a Democratic president. And Speaker Pelosi, uh, Speaker McCarthy made the argument the other day that, well, Nancy Pelosi set this precedent. She waited a long time to have a vote on the first impeachment of Donald Trump. You did hold a vote, we should add. But he said you made the rules and he's just following them now by not holding this initial vote for an impeachment inquiry. What do you say to that? I say that that's hogwash. I mean, it's ridiculous. And I don't know why the press keeps repeating it. The fact is, we said we were going to, I assigned my uh, speak, uh, committee chairs, six of them, uh, to develop the, the facts, because you have to act upon the facts. That's a strange thing to say, maybe around here, but you have to act upon the facts. We had a couple of weeks of doing that, a few weeks of doing that, and three or four weeks, we then prepared to bring the, the bill to the floor. They've had eight months of investigation, come up with nothing, and now they're trying to say, well, we're not going to have a vote because uh, Nancy didn't have a vote the first day. No, we had a vote. We were in preparation for a vote. But again, this is a big deal, an impeachment. You have to do it with care and not on impulse. And we, until we had the case ready, that's when we went forward. Now, they, again, have been investigating for months, coming up with nothing, and now they're going to say, on the basis of nothing, we're not going to have a vote on how we go forward. Don't blame it on me. Just take responsibility for what you are doing there. And don't misrepresent the care that we took, the respect that we had for the institution to go forward in a way that really addressed the high crimes and misdemeanors of Donald Trump.